watching the day and their uh, sit down interviews with the politicians and uh, mostly you know, state senate, state rep. And the one thing that I noticed, not every candidate, but the one thing that I, I did notice about some of this stuff is I don't really see much of a vision from the Republican Party. I don't see a grand plan to revitalize the economy here in the state of Connecticut. I don't hear much of anything. I hear, you know, deflecting questions that are answered, answering the way you think folks want you to answer questions in some cases. I was very disappointed. So I'm not going to name names. You can watch it for yourself. You make your own determination. But some of the folks who were running sounded as if they were Democrats that were running under the R moniker. And again, I, I'm all about doing things that are, are bettering for humanity in general. So I come behind this microphone almost every single day. And, you know, there are some issues that I certainly don't agree with the Republican Party on. Yet, because of my stances in other areas, I'm labeled a certain way. That's fine. I don't really care about the labels or a uh, waste of everybody's time. But I, I'm looking as I'm watching some of these folks, and in particular, some of the ones I watched yesterday, I want to vomit. Like, there's nothing there. How do you expect to win? Red wave? Why? Why would there be a red wave? Where's the vision? What are you changing? And I'll tell you something else, too. I, I mean, in particular, what bothered me was the question about reproductive rights. And it's... it's I, I understand that most people are comfortable with the way it was, right? But nobody explains why it was that way for Connecticut, most of the country, and why it was acceptable to most people. Nobody really gets into the nitty gritty. It's more just they backpedal, answer it the way you think it's supposed to be answered, and move on. Right? Same goes for voting. Backpedal, answer the way you think the public wants you to answer, move on. How about you take a stand? And you could actually be for choice and still take a stand. How about you get in front of the microphone and say, well, you know, I understand how difficult this decision must be. It must be the, it had, it, I'm sure it's the most difficult decision a woman may make. But I'd like to ask my Democrat colleagues, the folks who are running against me, at what point in time is it okay? Nobody wants to answer that question. Nobody, that's how I would answer those questions. I'd ask the question right back. Okay, we want to be pro-life? Fine. Women has a right to choose? Fine. Up until when? What's the date? Because nobody seems to want to pin Lamont down on that question. They want to try to box everybody else in. Nobody seems to want to ask Blumenthal that question. Or any of the other folks. Why don't you ask some of your opponents, what month is too late? Nine, eight, seven, six, five? What month? Get them on record. Okay. You're fine the way it was. That's okay. You're fine with a certain limit or certain date. Okay, say it. Let everybody know. I didn't see any of that. I didn't see any of it. As I was watching some of the stuff. And you know, on the day, of course, is asking questions designed to make the Democrat look good. I mean, housing and I mean, you know, affordable housing and voting and. Uh, reproductive rights, very little on the economy. But what do you expect? You got to go in there knowing those are coming, don't you? Or no? I don't know. Nobody stands. Well, 
So Lamont was uh, in front of that same panel and they had asked him about crime. And I'm gonna play about two minutes of audio here. It's broken up into different, well, I mean, I could break it up into different, but I'm just gonna flow the two minutes. So Lamont was asked about crime in the state of Connecticut. This was uh, this is on the day's website, so courtesy of the day for uh, posting this. I think what you know. I think what they did today. Now I'm going to give them credit because they deserve it. Getting all the politicians together in that setting to answer these questions was great. It would have been nice if they were a little bit longer, and I think a few more different questions. But other than that, I think they did a pretty good job. This is Ned um, answering the question about crime. Unity and this police accountability bill. So. Um, I have an idea of where you stand, like you have said that you don't want to look at it again, really, but why do you think <coughs> it's important that qualified immunity was scaled back? Um, pull the lens back just for one second. I mean, there's a lot of folks, uh, I, I think we are one of the safest states in the country. You probably saw some of the crime statistics that Travella came out with in the last week. Not true. Just so you know, the last report I read was that Hartford was one of the, Hartford was one of the worst states, excuse me, worst cities in the country for capital felony, per capita. Um, it's a good record. And that's thanks to, I, said a million times one of the best police forces you know in the country um and that's state police i've tried to hire you know every year since i was first elected more, more state police and i'm continuing to push them I, I i gotta stop there i mean he's tried to hire more state police officers since the time he was elected they're at a literally it's an all-time low okay it's a mass exodus from the police department how do we let this person get away with these kinds of complete fabrications forces now between our support and um and and some federal support get S some federal support the only reason <laughs> i'm so sick of God. I'm... the only reason why the books are balanced period is because there was a giant chunk of federal dollars that fell in his lap by the way armageddon is coming for the state when there'll be no federal dollars and if the stock market continues to trend in this either seesaw or downward motion the folks who have all the money in the state of connecticut won't have the same kind of money they've had in the past which means the coffers will be extremely bare and the bills continue to mount for the state. History. I think uh, that's what the priority is. That's a left thing, community policing. About the um, criminal justice bill. Hey, the bill we passed this last year was on a very bipartisan basis, which I'm quite... Uh... Can I get a, a bipartisan basis? Uh, Greg Howard the, on Friday told me nobody voted for it. No Republican voted for it. Is that true? Bi is it bipartisan? Can somebody give me an case? I can't, I can't find it anywhere. Well, you know, the qualified immunity came after uh, George Floyd. Um, and <clears throat> all it says was, um, is um, if you purposefully knew that you were breaking the law, like your knee on somebody's throat for nine plus minutes. Listen close to this, cops. I want you to tell me if this is true. Accountable. Uh, and... Um, 99.99% of our police. <laughs> so I'm going to stop again. The only reason why there is a A movement and it's us at a snail's pace to 
begin to bring multiple time criminals to justice in some way, shape or form is because all of us are screaming about it. Otherwise it would be, it would be ignored. You realize that, right? And they're beginning, they're making it sound like they're doing that now. And they may on the surface give you the visual that they're holding people now accountable and responsible for the criminal actions that they commit until after November. And then it all goes back to the way it was before. Let me, let me, let me, let me just jump in. Cause there, and here's the other thing too. Everybody seems to be a little hesitant and I'll, about saying this. I'll say it again. I said it on Friday. I think I said it either Thursday, one of the days last week that as a direct result of the police accountability bill and the, the way the police officers were treated in the months that followed George Floyd, police officers that had nothing to do with that one individual kneeling on the neck of Floyd for nine minutes, police officers in this state and around the country were demonized for actions other folks took. And as a result of that, the morale in the police department plummeted. The folks, when the accountability bill was enacted, police officers decided not to, because of the climate, decided not to risk their family and the, the money that they've made in their lifetime, their homes, their 401k, their retirement, their college kids account, kids college account. They decided not to risk that. And if they were close to retirement, they took it. And so as a result, the numbers of police officers went to all time lows. And again, I can't get the numbers for each individual police department around the state, but my guess is the same things happened there. Now, that also has emboldened criminals. Just turn on the nightly news. You'll see violent act after violent act. You'll see police officers being attacked or ambushed, which is what happened in Bristol. That ambush, by the way, the police officer that survived that shooting, the third cop, absolute hero. I got a chance to watch the video last night, what he did, how he did it, shot in the leg, badly injured, maneuvering himself in a position where he could take one shot, fire one shot, kill the son of a bitch. Killed him, dead. So, yeah, the blood of the police officers in Bristol and the blood of victims across the state is on the hands of the legislators who voted for, in a, the, the original vote, <clears throat> not the scaled back version, not the homogenized version, because the original vote was the, the temperature of the state at the time, demonizing cops, which Ned signed off on. And so did all these other legislators. And the blood of those cops is on your hands. And again, if I find out, we find out. I don't know the details of this either yet, but if those criminals who are part of the, sh the shooting, the murder,